Given here is a interesting problem based on matrix. The idea of the problem is not new to you because this is a standard problem which is taken in most of the book and moreover is relevant for both examination means as well as advanced. Particularly I will be focusing on advanced perspective of this problem. As you can clearly see one way of doing this problem will be to take this given matrix as a and try finding pattern. So method one or thought process is very obvious here in this kind of problem. You find a square, find a cube, find a four and try to find a pattern. Once you can find a pattern using that, you can find the sum of elements in the first two rows, which is basically numerator divided by the of it. The second way of doing this problem is again a well-known standard method, which is you take this matrix in and try to decompose in identity plus something else. IM becomes MI, which means if two matrix is commutative and here if one of them is identity, definitely it will be commutative, right? Then you can blindly use all the algebras of real number and it can be extended to the matrix as well. So in that sense, this matrix can be written as I in 2024C1, M, we have 2024C2, M square and so on and so forth. And then we expect either M square a higher powers to be null matrix or maybe M square to be identity matrix or maybe M square to be uh, something A. Like in that sense, we expect something such that this patterns becomes very rigid. And instead of calculating m square m cube, I can easily, you know, like calculate just i plus some linear factor of it. And that makes your life safer. Unfortunately, none of them will work here. If you calculate m square, that's not going to be zero. Neither m cube is going to be zero. You can give a try, right? So what to do in that case? Now, other case will be maybe some powers of m square itself becomes, you know, like uh, either m, let's say m cube becomes m in some of the process m4 again it's like m square m5 okay again it's m cube so if that becomes cyclic then that helps you to write this expression as i times maybe m times this something okay and that makes your life simple But clearly you can see like this is not going to happen very nicely because these entries are not so nice. They are really bad looking entries except for the second row problem. Now the hint is coming, not obviously, but little bit hint is coming from the statement of problem itself. What they want is they want to add first two rows, right? And then divide with the third one. Okay. So it means row addition. So can't you see something interesting in this matrix? Yes, clearly. What is the sum of first row? Is one. What about sum of second row? Three minus two. That's one. What of third of sum of third row? That's also one. There is seven by twelve and five by twelve is one. And that's really magical. It means sum of all the three rows of this matrix is basically one each. And overall sum of all the three rows is going to be three. Now you might guess like is it possible that this power 2024 will also have some of all the rows and still three or some of all entries of this matrix is still three even after 2024 so can i conclude if i add all this summation a b c d f g h i will it be one plus one plus one three you might guess yes but you have to give a you know like very logical reasoning when we are doing this you calculate a square and then again to your surprise you will see indeed a plus b plus is coming so is D, E, F and so is G, H, I. But that didn't convince you legally for AQ. Maybe after AQ pattern is breaking. Even if you trust AQ, what of A4 and A5? So here is a very legal way of doing this. And that's really enchanting. Let's call if I take this given matrix as A. So we want A to the power 2024. Now I know this matrix has a very exciting property. What property? Its row summation is 1. So we have 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 6, 3 minus 2, 0, and 3, 4, 5 by 12. 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 5 by 12. Now I know since this row summation is 1 by 12, so I can think of a matrix which basically adds the row. So imagine if we have 1, 1, 1, right? 
So what basically 1 1 1 is doing to this matrix? I will do the simple matrix multiplication. You can clearly see it's doing nothing but it will add it 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 6. What about second row? It's 3 minus 2 plus 0. And third row is 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 plus 5 by 12. Which means by multiplying 1 1 1, we got the answer as 1 1 1. That's really crazy. So if I call this matrix as A and call 1 1 as let's say some X matrix. So we have a property of this magical X matrix. AX equal to X. Now what about A square X? That's not very difficult because in this expression you pre-multiply with A. So A times A of X equals A of X. Now we know because of associative rule, I can associate A and A together. So we have A square X equals A times X and A times X is back to X. Okay, what does it mean? It means without even knowing what a square is explicitly, I know a square will be something like golu golu biki riki whatever. But that will multiply with x, which is one one one, is is sure to give me again one one one. It means the sum of element this is star plus star plus this half moon must still be one. So sum of this first row must be one. Why? Because let's say if it is x y z, we know x plus y plus z after multiplying has to be 1. Similarly, if it is let's say alpha beta gamma alpha plus beta plus gamma should also be 1. Right. So I don't know what basically x, y, g is. I don't actually care what their summation is. Now you can extend the same idea for a cube because now you pre-multiply that expression a into a square x equals again a x, a x is back to x and we have a into a square x by commutative sorry by associative property it's a cube times x implies we have same structure a q is also having the same property and in general you keep on multiplying and very soon you can realize that a to the power 24 x is x hence we don't care about what a to the power 24 is it's a b c d e f g h i but if i multiply with 1 1 1 i'm gonna get 1 1 1 so I hope you enjoyed the problem and it was too cool. Now some of you can take X as different matrix also. Instead of just one column, you could have taken the entire 3 cross 3 matrix. Okay, that motivation of one column is coming because it was 3 cross 3. So the matrix which I multiply must have okay number of rows matching here. So you can come with 3 cross 1 or you can come with even 3 cross 3. It will give the same. Answer right. So instead of row, imagine if there would have been question where the sum of column is 1. Let's say you have 2 minus 1, 0 and 3 minus 2, 0 and 1 by 2, 1 by 3 and you have 1 by 6. Now what will you do? Again, you can now what you can do is because now columns are added. So you can now pre-multiply with 1, 1, 1. Either 3 cross 3 multiple uh, matrix also you can take. Or if I take a row vector kind of thing. Because this guy is 3 cross 3. So now we have 1 cross 3. So I know the answer that I am going to get is again a column. Row. And what's that? First row will hit this. So you know it's 1. one. So exactly same thing. Now you have x times a matrix is x. So x times x is going to be x square. So x square is going to be x square. right so this time we have to post multiply if i'll take x a and post multiply with a so we have x a now x a is back to x so x a square is back to x and you can similarly take x a to the power a in e and will be x where n is a.